Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I'm Hashim Ali Khan. Now I'm going to start the problems on trend analysis. Last so many problems we have done on comparative statement analysis. So this topic is technique of financial statement analysis. So all these are the techniques, comparative statement and trend analysis, common size, etc. So I have given the complete theory in the first two videos regarding how to make the comparative, how to make the trend analysis. So you have to watch from beginning. If you join in the middle, you may not be able to understand. So now I'm going to start the next problem, problem number 14. 13 problems already we have completed. Now, 14th problem. Before starting 14th problem, I expect my viewers to have a printout of the problems which are given in the link under my description. Always keep ready the problem and take a screenshot of the solution of 14th and 15th problem. Then I'll explain all the points of these two problems. See the 14th one. Calculate the trend percentages from the following figures of X limited, taking 1979 as the base and interpret them. Rupees and lakhs. Year 1979, 80, 81, 82, 83. Five years data is given. First year is 1979. It is asking you to make 1979 as the base year. And three items are given sales, stock and profit before tax. So what, the, what we'll take is say year is given in the rows. Now we make year in the columns and the sales, stock, profit before tax is given in rows. We make it in columns. Now see here carefully. X limited calculation of 10 percentage. Item we are taking in rows. Which are the items sales, stock and profit before tax? And the year I am taking in columns 1979, 80, 81, 82, 83, right? In this way, first of all, base year is given 1979. The first year is 1979. Take all the trend values of base year as 100. Always, whenever you are calculating trends, 10 percentages, the first year normally will take it as base year. And in base year, all the trend values should be taken as 100. So here, here we have taken 100, 100, 100. Second, the other trend values will be calculated by the following formula. Now we want all these trend values. These trend values will be calculated by applying this formula. Current year value divided by base year value into 100. By applying this formula, we can be able to get all the trend values for all the years. First year, you take 100. That is 1979 is the base year, 100. Now, see here, one by one, uh, I'll show it for two as a practice, as a, uh, I mean, method, how to make the calculations here. Sales. First, 1979 over. Now I'm coming to 1980. What is the 1980 sales? 2340. What is the sales for uh, 1979? It is 1881. So the formula will be 2340 divided by 1881. 2340 divided by 1881 into 100. You will get 124.40. This is the trend value for 1980 sales. So sales 1980 124.40. Now I need 1981. How much are the sales in 1981? 2655. 2655 in numerator. Denominator is same. Base year value. The base year value is 1881. So 1881. 2655 divided by 1881 into 100. 141.15 is the trend value for 1981. 141.15. Now 1982. The actual value for 1982 sales are 3021. The so numerator 3021, denominator same base year value 1881. So here 3021 divided by 1881 into 100, 160.61. Last 1983. The actual sales of 1983 is 3768. So numerator 3768, denominator same, base year 1881 into 100, 200.32. So we have calculated the trend values for the item sales. 
same method you have to follow for stock also for stock 1980 first of all 1979 we have all taken 100 now we have to calculate from 1980 so how much is the stock of 1980 here you can see 1980 stock is 781 and base year stock is 709 the denominator we will take 709 for all values denominator and numerator will be 781 781 by 709 781 by 709 into 100 110.16 here I have taken 110.16 next year 1981 the actual stock was 816 the numerator 816 denominator 709 into 100 115.09 next 1982 the actual stock is 944 so 944 by 709 into 100 133.15 last 1983 the actual stock is double one five four one one five four divided by seven out nine into hundred one sixty two point seven six. So for an example, I have written all these things so that you can be able to understand. You can be able to remember how we got these trend values. Same procedure. I have not illustrated here. The same procedure you have to adopt for profit before tax. The profit before tax for nineteen eighty is four thirty five. So four thirty five divided by three twenty one into 100 you will get 135.51 similarly next year is 458 458 by 321 into 100 you will get 142.68 next one is 527 527 by 321 into 100 you will get 164.17 last one 672 672 divided by 321 into 100 you will get 209.35 that's all these are the calculations of trend percentages. This is the first problem. That's why I have explained you in detail. Now it is asking you to give the interpretation on these trend percentages. Now how to give interpretation? One by one we have to see. <coughs> sales. Sales 100, 124.4, 141.15, 160.61 and 200.32. If you carefully observe here, the sales have doubled. It was 100 in 1979 and it has become 200 in 1983. So over a period of five years, the sales have doubled. There is a consistent increase in sales value. That's what you have to write in interpretation. In interpretation, you should write this point. The sales are consistently increasing over a five year period. It was doubled in five year period. So here interpretation, I have given like this. The growth in sales has been impressive. Sales have doubled in a period of five years. Just try to do. Although the growth is more or less uniform, there is a jump in the rate of increase in sales in the last years. See here. Here only 24% is increased first year. Then 24 to 41, that means 15, 16% increase. But from 61 to uh, 41 to 60, 60 to 200, there's a big jump in sales, what we observe in 1982 and 83. First two years, the sales was a little bit slower. But later two years, the sales, there's a big jump in sales in 1982 and 83. That's what you have to write in the interpretation in examination. Second point stock 100, 110, only 10% increased. 110 to 115, only 5% increased. Then 115 to 133, a big jump. Then 133 to 162, again big jump. Same is the case. As the sales are increasing, the stock is also increasing in the same pattern. So here interpretation you can write the rate of growth in stock is good. The growth was slow in 1980-81 and there was a spurt in 1982-83. Here only 10% increased, here only 5% increased. But from 15 to 33 means 18% there is an increase. First only 10%, then 5%, then 18%. So there is a big jump in stock from 82 and 83. Growth has been satisfactory. The growth has been satisfactory considering a slower growth in uh, stock coupled with a faster growth in sales indicative of good inventory management. That means the slower growth in stock and a higher growth in sales indicates a good inventory management by the managers. That means inventory is controlled properly. That's why the rate of growth in sales is higher 
then the rate of growth in stock that is better that is good next last profit before tax the increase in profit before tax 100 to 135 35 percent increased 35 to 42 only 7 percent increase 42 to 164 209 so over a period of time again you can see the profit before tax has doubled it was 100 now it has become 209 so you can write the profit before tax has grown consistently except a slowdown in 1981 1981 because 135 to 142 only 7 percent is the increase from 1981 80 to 81 only 7 percent increase in pvt profit before tax on an overall basis the growth in profit before tax has kept pace with the growth in sales so normally what will happen there is a relationship between sales and profit before tax higher the sales higher will be the profit before tax so here the profit before tax is keeping pace with sales as the sales are increasing the profit before tax is also increasing in the same pattern then last the overall growth rates actually achieved by the company are satisfactory from these factors we can finally conclude that the overall growth rates in sales in stock in profit before tax is satisfactory it has been doubled over a period of five years that's it so this is the end of problem number 14 now 15th problem from the following data relating to asset side of the balance sheet of polymer limited for the period 31st December 85 to 31st December 88 the so four years data is given 85 86 87 88 calculate the trend percentage taking 1985 as the base year first year normally we considered as base year then the assets are given cash debtor stock other current assets land building plant all current assets and fixed assets are given actual values are given now we have to convert these actual values into trend percentages what we have done in the previous problem exactly same but it is not asking you to give the interpretation only it is asking you to calculate the trend values so i am calculating the trend values <coughs> see here polymer limited calculation of trend percentage assets cash data stock the current asset land building plan whatever is given in the problem then years are given 85 86 87 88 four years data the first year is the base year 1985 so base year is 1985 take all trend percentage of base year as 100 every time whenever we calculate trend percentage the base year trend values should be taken as 100 so put 1985 all values 100 even total also take 100 don't take the total of all these values total should also be taken as 100 value because total is given in the problem you have to calculate the trend percentage for total also now first of all cash the other trend percentage will be calculated as follows trend percentage formula value in current year divided by value in base year into 100 current year value numerator base year value denominator into 100 you will get the trend percentage example two examples have taken cash and debtors first of all cash 1986 1986 is the current year 1985 is the base year so what is the cash in 1986 120 120 by 100 into 100 see here 120 by 100 into 100 120 next 1987 the cash is 80 80 by 100 into 100 80 by 100 into 180 1988 it is 140 140 by 100 into 100 140 by 100 into 100 140 so we got all the trend values for cash 1986 120 80 140 120 80 140 that's it next is data the base year data are 200 now denominator you should take 200 always numerator take the respective actual values 1986 what is the actual data is 250 250 by 200 into 100 you can see here 250 by 200 into 100 125 next year 325 325 by 200 into 100 325 by 200 into 100 162.5 next last one 400 400 by 200 into 100 so 400 by 200 into 100 it is 200 that's it these are the trend percentages for debtors. Debtors. 
125, 162.5, 200. That's it. Same way, other values also you have to calculate. I have not calculated separately. For your understanding, two examples I have taken cash and debtors. Next one is stock. Base year stock 300. Current year stock 400. So 400 by 300 into 100. We'll get 1986 stock. 133.33. Similarly, 1987 stock. 350 by 300 into 100. You will get 116.67. Last one, 500 by 300 into 100. You will get 166.67. Or same other current assets. Base year other current assets are 50. And current year 75. So 75 by 50 into 100. Then 125 by 50 into 100. 150 by 50 into 100. We will get, you will get all these values. 150, 250, 300. We have completed the current assets. Now fixed assets land. Base year 400 and current year 500. 500 by 400 into 100. Then 500 by 400 into 100. Then 500 by 400 into 100. All same. So land value 125, 125, 125. Then building. Base year building 800. Current year 1000. 1000 by 800 into 100. 1200 by 800 into 100. 1500 by 800 into 100. We will get this value. 125, 150, 187.5. Last one is plant. Base year plant 1000, current year plant 1000. So 1000 by 1000 into 100, 100%. 1200 by 1000 into 100, 1500 by 1000 into 100, you will get 100, 120, 150. Over. Now total also you should take the same. The first column total is 2850. This is the base year. The base year 2850, 100%. Right now, 1986, the total comes to 3345. So, take 3345 in numerator 3345 divided by 2850 into 100. Similarly, 3780 divided by 2850 into 100. Last one, 4690 divided by 2850 into 100. You'll get 174.04. That's all. These are the two problems that is. 14th and 15th regarding trend analysis so i have completed totally 15 problems on this techniques of financial statement analysis so if you are satisfied with my lecture give a like to the video share my channel in your group in your friend circle so that more students can watch the video and enhance the knowledge give your comments from each university from which country you are watching this video and lastly, don't forget to subscribe my channel if you have not yet subscribed. Inshallah, we will continue the next problem in the next video.